Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing a Rate Your Doomstack video covering a Festus the Leech Lord uh, Chaos Giant Doomstack. So, playing as the Shadow Legion, we got Festus the Leech Lord, who we confederated, which you now can do, uh, with uh, Bellicor or Archeon. And he's got 18 Chaos Giants and Bilius Thundergruff uh, Chaos Giant. So, the big thing here is that these have ridiculous amounts of missile resistance. So, 60% missile resistance on the regular Chaos Giants, plus 5% ward save. And one Bilius Thundergruff, he's only got 35% missile resistance. I kind of feel like maybe Lord effects aren't really applying to him that much. Uh, which is a bit weird, because he is definitely a Warriors of Chaos unit. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe taking him out and just putting another Chaos Giant might be better. Because if we have a look at the stat differences as well, um, he's slower than the other Chaos Giants. He has lower melee attack. He doesn't have higher melee defense though. Uh, and he doesn't have as much weapon strength. Anyway, we're going up against um, uh, the northern provinces here in Cathay, where they've got four full stacks coming at us. Loads of missile units here, so this is definitely an appropriate test. It's a bit of an annoying sound there, but let's just jump into the battle here and see how it goes. Order resolve says we'll win, but uh, we'll lose a few giants. So, giants have uh, been a meme on the channel for a while now. They have routinely been at the bottom of my lists of units you should recruit, because they're usually such trash and the reason for that is because um they have a gigantic weakness to the most common unit in the game missile units right missile infantry just any, any kind of missiles because they um they had high hit points but they had low missile resistance low armor and they've got big models making them super easy to hit and uh, their animations you know, they didn't swerve or anything like, for example, a Carnosaur is big, but it moves around quite fluidly, making it hard to hit. But Giants are stupidly slow and they, they're quite stationary. So having a weakness to the most common unit in the game when you are considered an elite unit is not good. Because what you would do if you, were, you had any brains at all, and the AI does this, as soon as they see a Giant, all missile units aim for it straight away because they know that it's a high bounce power unit, killing it means that they'll win the battle faster. So oftentimes bringing a giant is a ju just a fucking mistake. Um, it's a, um, same thing in multiplayer, I suppose. Um, although I really can't comment on that stuff because I don't play multiplayer. But um, if you've got loads of missile resistance, that's different. Also, on top of that, you've got a lord here, Festus a Leech Lord, who is able to provide a area of effect healer and he's also able to increase the heal cap of the army, I think, by 50%. So what that means is that instead of 75%, you've got 125% extra healing. Because 75 should be the base. So 75% of their health. I'm just going to get a calculator up on my other monitor here, just real quick. And get a rough idea of how much health they should be able to regenerate. Right, so... If they've got 12,620 health... Right, and then we multiply that by 1.25. They they should be able to effectively heal 15,775 health. Now, if this was Warhammer 2, we'd just be able to look at this and see. But in Warhammer 3, they, I don't know why they did this. They made that hidden for some reason. Um, so giving the uh, the uh, the giants effective hit, hit points of hang on 12 six. Hang on. 620. Their effective hit points are 28,395, which is pretty bloody ridiculous. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's send them in the battle here and just see how we go. And then, of course, you know, giving them this much. Oh, that's 70% missile resistance. Right, because the. Alright, he's got the Festering Shroud. Now, that item, you have to stay out of melee in order for that to activate, but that's good when we're making the approach there. So they're 75% missile resistant. That's ridiculous. The thing is with the Festering Shroud, though, is that um, that's an item that provides 5% missile resistance to the army, and then there's this one here, the 10% mis missile resistance in an area. Now, the 5% missile resistance to the entire army can stack, so you can have multiple heroes equip it, I believe. Um, but that being said, at you know 5% each, you know, you'd have to equip a fair few to get the full 90%. But since they've already got high base missile resistance anyway, now um, you only you know a few extra heroes providing a bit of extra missile resistance would be could be pretty good. You know, maybe putting in a um, 
an exalted champion of Nurgle or Corn, whichever. Alright, put this down first. Oh, no, actually, we should go with this one here first. Because they haven't taken much damage at the start here. So, might as well just do some more ascension damage. These are mutually exclusive. I only have one active at the same time. Don't worry too much about the um, miss, uh, the melee infantry. They're not important. Now, it's really important to keep your blob together around uh, Festus for that extra missile resistance, but also for the uh, area effect healing, which I know isn't currently active at the moment. Yeah, people often meme on blobs being like, Oh, why are you getting to blob? It's stupid. But there's a reason for blobbing. There's a reason for it. It has weaknesses, for sure. You can only hit so many units at a time. But it has a lot of strengths. And when you're using massive amounts of area effect bonuses, you want to make sure they're all getting it. Even if that means taking a few extra shots. But I mean, at the end of the day, their, their shots aren't really that effective against them anyway. Now, another benefit to being in a blob like this... Hang on, I can't resist that. Another benefit to being in a blob like this is that you basically stun lock infantry. Even if they don't get killed by these attacks, they're constantly getting knocked down. And so they're not getting a chance to attack. I guess the main benefit for having this guy in here is, is this one here, but honestly, I I think that if he's missing out on a good portion of missile resistance, he'd just be much better off having another Chaos Giant. Because there is there's a 25% missile resistance. No, it's even more than that, 30% missile resistance because it doesn't have the ward save there. That's a big difference. That guy is essentially taking twice the amount of damage that the other guys are. I just don't think you really need that ability. It's not that powerful. Okay, I really need to get that Iron Hell gun up. It hasn't done that much damage yet. Yeah, they're really not doing that much damage at all. Alright, I think it's time to switch for healing. Another, another benefit of the blob is that you tend to get a lot more evenly spread out damage, making area of effect healing just really effective. That way everybody's getting some benefits out of it. Because the last thing you want is for one unit to get isolated damage, just having all of their units shoot at one of your troops and killing it. Okay, I really need to get at these Iron Hail Gunners. I'm sure they're doing a lot more damage than these guys. Although, we don't have any any like melee resistance, so we're actually probably taking a fair bit of damage to their melee units. Maybe the melee units are actually more of a threat. Because, yeah, there's only 5% ward save there. Reinforcements coming in. Good. Seeing any issues here. A little bit of damage, but uh, 
Yeah, no problems. Pretty easy army to use. If sitting there getting shot and I'm just not really that worried. It's just weird to see giants actually do a good job. I'm so used to them being just total garbage. Do you remember that uh, rating your doomsday video from ages ago? This was in Warhammer 2. Somebody named all of their giants war mammoths as <laughs> a joke. Um, I still fought the battle anyway, and that was so friggin tough. That was up against the Empire. They were just getting picked off and shot so easily. But that was, um, that was a Norsecan giant one. And we had no ability to heal them. Now the thing is here, I think the main benefit to um, having Thestus is, of course, the battle heal cap. But, as the Warriors of Chaos, you don't necessarily need Festus to heal. You could have um, Nurgle heroes. You probably need more than one though. Nurgle um, exalted uh, heroes. Or a Nurgle Lord. Could provide the healing. But yeah, the battle heal cap is provided by Festus. I'm not sure if he's providing extra missile resistance. So I'd have to have a look at his skills there, because I'm not uh, I'm not a hundred percent familiar with all of his skills. But so far, doing tons of damage, not taking loads of damage. Let's see. Speed up a little bit while there's not that much coming at us. Might be a good idea to start making our way over here. Festus got a lot of kills from his Mortis Engine ability while well, we had it active. Okay, try to try hit that guy <laughs> while on fast mode. I'm trying to swat a fly with chopsticks. Passes. As soon as a, a unit routes, for some reason, single entities just don't connect with them anymore. They just sit there and try to hump them. It's fucking ridiculous. I reckon it was better in Warhammer 2 with uh, dealing with routing units. I'm sure many of you guys know how frustrating it is to actually kill other single entities once they've routed. It's actually a lot easier if they're unbreakable. Of the derpy way that they connect. So yeah, they're all in good shape except for this one here. This one's taking the most damage, so I'd say that it would be better if you just took him out and got another Chaos Giant, because this is this is ridiculously strong. Like, that was two full stacks we've just taken out, because they sell it out, so they had uh, two full armies to begin with. I wonder if we're going to see the uh, max, he like the maximum healing on some of these units. Let's keep moving, keep moving. We need to get at that artillery, otherwise that could do a lot of damage over time. It does do flame attack, but we're not weak against fire. Although it does slow down our regeneration by a little bit, which isn't that big of a deal. Let's switch to... No, uh, this one here still needs healing. I was going to switch to the Mortis Engine. At the end of the day, we're here to see how good the Chaos Giants can be, not how good Festus can be. We already know Festus is pretty good. So, I'm trying to get over to here. Yeah, it doesn't just add that much damage. 2,000 is not that big of a deal. It's like 10% of the total health potential of one giant. Like I said, you want to keep them together. Trying to 
get that hit. Yeah, they look, they're focus firing on the unit that has the least amount of missile resistance. The AI is pretty good that way. It does actually understand uh, to shoot at the, the weakest unit. In that way, it's, you know, not entirely stupid. Haven't been using this ability. I just don't think I need to. Okay, another big blob coming this way. Alright, bit of a problem when all their missile units are kind of spread out. When they're all just in one area, it's easy to go after them. But we're not suffering any serious damage, apart from the Regiment of Renown, which I, I'd probably just take out of the army. Yeah, he's a, he's a weakness in the army. But I guess we can use this as a, a way to check what the um, the heal cap is of the entire army. Just pop down some magic heals on him. Also got that action using it. Oh, I can't see this. Maybe we should try to get this guy so badly damaged so that I can actually see how much potential regen he's actually got. Because we can't see it until until that line shows up. So I'm just going to stand here with him and just going to let him tank it. And I'll keep using fleshy abundance on him. Because remember, this isn't a saving disaster battle or anything. We're here to test this out. I don't know why they made it so that the heal values were hidden. Why they did that. We could end up inflicting the army losses pretty soon. Still hasn't hit its max heal cap. God damn. That's the army losses. We never hit the max heal cap. I'm fairly sure this guy here lost more than 125% of his health over the course of the battle. Is there an unbreakable unit or something? Uh, what's happening here is that all of their troops haven't come onto the battlefield yet. It's it's an extremely early army losses. Jeez, Festus did a hundred thousand damage. I only had that on for a short time. I only did a couple of these blood boils. Jesus Christ. So that one comes in, immediately breaks. There we go. There's the armor losses. Right. Well, we're pretty much at full health. This one here. It's not getting Festus' healing. Ah, we don't need to be at full health. Whatever. Well. I think we can all agree on that. Was shit. Absolute 0 out of 10. Why are you wasting my time with this garbage? Just recruit... Marauders, it'd be better than this. No, I'm just kidding. No, that was insane. Um, I think you could definitely make it a little bit better, but as it stands right now, it's still 10 out of 10. Like, this is possibly one of the strongest armies that you can make in Warhammer at the moment because thinking about all the potential enemies that could give it a challenge, do magic attacks make any difference? Not really, because this one here. When it comes to um, the Giants, they're very strong in melee, and they always have been. So, 
Magic attack, physical attack, physical attack, doesn't matter. They've always been super weak against missile attacks. So if you're using Sisters of Avalon, for example, or um, Horrors of Zinch, well, we're still blocking it because missile resistance blocks both physical and magical damage. If it's as long as it's a missile attack. So those units aren't that much of a concern. You know, there were a lot of missile units there shooting at us and just wasn't doing that much damage. Even the unit, the Regiment of Renown, that didn't have as much missile resistance didn't didn't hit its full heal cap. Brave or a fool. Just gonna cancel. This isn't a disaster campaign. We just want to get to the next turn. Um, you know, if you went up against a whole bunch of single entity uh, melee fighters, giants will give them a run for their money. Their melee attack was at a hundred. So, you know, if you went up against a bunch of dreadsaurians, for example, you'd probably be able to handle it. My ecstatic legionaries. Get through all this. Get through all this. Don't don't care. <laughs> Just happened to send it to me on like a cursed end turn. You know, it'd be good against demons because demonic armies don't have great missile units for one thing. You know, most of them don't even have any missile resist uh, missile units. Only Zinch does, and I don't think any of Zinch's um, missiles are particularly good against giants because even if he had like a pink don't horror spam to tempt or um, threaten me. I don't think that would be that big of a deal so of the mortal armies you basically need like if you went up against something like an outrider spam the you wouldn't be able to catch Something them with giants the first, but the thing is the outriders would just eventually run out of ammunition because of just the ridiculous you amounts of missile resistance. All, you, all you'd have to do, basically, is get into a big Welcome. blob. Inside of trees would be even better. God, get your trade agreements. Sort of. Yeah, get into a big blob inside of trees and just wait until they run out of ammo. And then that's it. They just don't have enough Stay ammunition to kill. But well, you know what could give the giants a hard time, actually? You if you go into Athaloran and they have something like um, Deepwood Scouts or Way Watchers... Just yeah, loads of those kind of me. missile units, but they've also got the extra ammunition from the their buildings. So if they get like 45 shots, that could give you a run for your money. Damn. Pity is weakness. So yeah, that's probably something that you wouldn't want to be doing with this army, is going straight into Athel Lauren. But that's about the only thing I can think of that it would probably struggle with. But it, again, if you got a couple more heroes and put some more festering shrouds on, and got yourself up to 90% missile resistance, Sorry, you'd need 85% missile resistance plus the 5% ward save. Then you'd then you'd be fine. Okay, let's have a look here. So we need to go to Nangal, which is over here. Okay, let's have a look. So on the campaign map, these guys here have 60% missile resistance and 5% ward save. So essentially, you know, 65% missile resistance, right? But this guy here has only got 35% with no ward save there. So that's a big difference. Yeah, there's like a 30% resistance difference. I I just get rid of that. And if you have a look at the stat differences, like these guys here, the main benefits of this dude is, of course, that Vortex spell. He's got more health, got about 10% more health than the other ones do, and um, a bit extra melee defense. But he loses melee attack, which... And he loses speed and weapon strength. I don't think he's getting the benefits from the Lord skills. Let's have a look at this. So we're starting from the red line here. Um, yeah, that melee attack and weapon strength. Yeah, I don't think he's getting that because the other guys had um, higher weapon strength. Freakish mutations. Right, that's where the ward save is coming from, and he's not getting it. Right, so the Regiment of Renown are not affected by at least um, Festus's red line. Okay, so that's bad. You should definitely take that out then. Dark Apothecary, that's where you've got Battle Healing Cap 25%. Another 25% there, so 50%. That's where I got the 125%, because the base is 75%, and then you add on 50%. I think that's how it works, although I somewhat think that the numbers aren't adding up because I feel like we're getting way more healing than that. 
kind of feel like we, we'll it's even higher than that but I, I just don't know the actual equation so feel free to let me know if i'm wrong um that only affects festus all right so the main benefits of festus is he's reducing the speed of enemy units so that we're actually able to catch up to them to some degree um and he's providing extra battle healing cap but as far, far as area effect healing, you, you've got other avenues to get that as Warriors of Chaos um, with um, Nurgle Spellcaster Lords or Nurgle um, Exalted uh, Champions of, of um, Nurgle because they've got that, they can have that area effect heal, which doesn't cost Winds of Magic. So that's pretty good. What about your, um, about your item here? Which you don't have equipped, do you? No, so let me just have a look. That wouldn't have made any difference. Okay, let's have a look at your equipment. So you've got Trickster's Helm, Tormentor Sword. Yep, Talisman of Preservation. There's the Festering Shroud. So, Missile Resistance plus 5%, all units in an army. I believe that stacks. So, how many of those do you have? So, that's an enchanted item. You've got two of them. So, yeah, if you had another hero, you could put in another 5%. Now, that might not seem like that big of a difference, right? Extra 5%. But you got to consider this. At the moment, it's taking 35% damage from all missile attacks, right? Um, more or less. If you... Okay, you're at... So you're taking... Um, you're at 65%. So how much more do you need to get to 90%, the max heal cap? So if you're at 65, you need 70, 80... Uh, sorry, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. You need five more heroes. So if you had five more heroes in the army, each with a Festering Shroud, I, mean, I know this is a lot of extra effort, right? The remaining, instead of taking 35% damage, they would only take 10% damage from missile attacks. Still same amount of damage from physical, uh, from, from melee attacks, right? But all the damage that we took in that battle was mostly from the missiles, right? Um, they would take one quarter the amount of damage, effectively giving them four times more effective health than what they currently have right here. So, that could make a big difference. I'm really nitpicking though, okay? You don't absolutely don't need to do this. Let's be real, this was a 10 out of 10 doom stack as it is. I'm just thinking if you want to go absolutely bonkers and make them into a, like, absolutely unkillable machine, then having five heroes with that Festering Shroud could make a big difference. Now, let's add up, how is he getting to 60%? How is he doing this? Um, Alright, so he's even got a banner. Well, that one only applies for, for one unit, so let's not take that into consideration. Alright, so you got 60% missile resistance. I think they have 15% base missile resistance now. And you have a technology in here that gives 25%. So that gets them to 40%. Right. Then you have 45% from the Festering Shroud. He's still missing 15%, which I'm pretty sure he in um, the Gifts of Chaos... There is an undivided one that provides 15% missile resistance. There it is, there it is. Um, this one here. Missile resistance, 15%. So that adds up to 60%. Right. That's where he's getting it from. Right. I don't know if there's any other avenues for you to get missile resistance that elsewhere. But that is pretty freaking good. That worked out really well. Because this is a pretty heavy duty missile faction. And they had some really good missile units. And we walked out of there full health. And I, I do think that Festus's battle healing cap plus 50% made a big difference there. Um, I really don't know, again, the math behind what that 50% entails. Because it does seem like it, we just had unlimited healing on this dude here. Um, but I'm just, I'm just not 100% sure because the game just doesn't tell you what the heal values are anymore. Uh, which is kind of frustrating when you're trying to rate something and trying to get a figure on how much potential it actually has. So yeah, um, obviously this is a 10 out of 10. Uh, you can make it better, but you don't need to make it better. I would say that this guy here is a weakness in the army. Just because he's a regiment of renown doesn't make him better than the originals. Especially when CA forget to bloody make these guys bound to the um, to the red line skills. That's really, really, really bad. Um, so I would take him out and just get another Chaos Giant because they're honestly better. Um, it takes like half the amount of damage from missile attacks in this guy here. And he was a weakness in the army. Um... But yeah, just absolutely fantastic Doomstack that I think that would, you'd struggle to find an enemy, like four full stacks that would actually have a chance against this, that the AI would actually produce. Like, even if you had like a one-man Doomstack Colex Sun Eater with 90% ward save, which I think is impossible for him to get 
currently in uh, Warhammer 3. Uh, but let's just say hypothetically that happened. 90% ward save, he's got a bazillion vassals, he's got 2,000 2, base weapon strength, and he comes charging in here against this army. Even then, I'd say these Chaos Giants here could have a chance of taking out Kerlek Sun Eater in that case here. And the thing is, you will never encounter Kerlek Sun Eater that powerful in, in the campaign, because he basically gets gridlocked fighting um, um, Grimgore right at the start, and will only end up getting like one or two vassals maximum. So as the AI, you'll just never encounter that anyway so 10 out of 10 doomstack absolutely fantastic i think i covered basically everything you could possibly think of uh to make this any better if you if you really wanted to sort of tempted to give this a shot in my own campaign but it does seem like it would take a bit of effort to get to this point anyway that's the end of this one here guys thanks for sending this one in appreciate you and i'll see you next time fuckers bye